Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your daily Bible class for real living. And now, listen to our scripture today. James chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. My brethren, be not masters, knowing that we will receive a greater combination. For in many things we offend all. If, if any man offend not in word, the same is the perfect man, and is able to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths, and they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. And behold also the ships, which they are so great, and are driven by fierce winds, and yet they can be driven about or turned about by a very small helm or rudder, wherever the pilot of the ship desires. Even so the tongue is a little member, but it boasts of great things. He says, and how great is the fire that it creates, and the tongue is a fire, the whole world of iniquity. And so is the tongue among our members. It defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, which is, of course, the fire of hell. For every kind of beasts and birds and serpents and things in the sea is tame. But who can tame mankind? especially when it comes to the tongue. No man can tame it. It is unruly, full of deadly poison. James talks about the tongue today. He talks about how deadly it can be. He says, understand this, he says, you who are masters of your own destiny, or so you think. You know, the problem is we receive condemnation when we decide to take a, our own destiny. You know, Frank Sinatra used to say, I did it my way. Well, the unfortunate thing is, if you do it your way, what will happen is it will lead you away from God and not to God. James says, however, if you are able to tame the tongue, oh, I tell you, he says, you brought the whole body into, uh, into subjection. He says, there are many things that we offend. And he says, but most of all, we offend with the word, with our tongues. In one manner, we can praise God, who, you know, we cannot see. But on the other manner, we curse men created in the image of God. In a later portion of this same book, James says, a spring that brings bitter and sweet water at the same time is impossible. The only creature on the planet that can do this is man. On one hand, we can sit there and we can flatter and we can raise people up. When on the other hand, or with the other side of our mouth, we can speak curses into people's lives and literally destroy them with our words. We all know people who are very quick to give their opinion. They're very quick to give their judgment, very quick to say the wrong thing at the wrong time for the wrong reason to the wrong person. And that happens all the time. James says this, if you're able to control your tongue, he says, you are a perfect person. That's because you'll say the right thing at the right time for the right reason to the right person. That's what he's saying. But he says, it's an incredible thing. And he uses two illustrations. He says, we put horses, we put bits in horses' mouths. And by that little bit, we're able to turn that horse to whatever direction we want. He also uses the illustration of the great ships and how that the ships are carried about the world by fierce winds, of course, today we have ships that have tremendous motors, and yet those tremendous big boats are able to be turned by a relatively small rudder in proportion to the ship. He says, even so, the tongue itself is a small member. Remember, the tongue is no more than about two or three inches long by approximately about an inch and a half wide. A small portion when you think about the fact of the entire body. Yet the tongue can also cause the body all kinds of problems. All kinds of situations can happen. He says, so the tongue is a little member, but it boasts of great things. And of course, the reason why it boasts of great things is simply because of what's in the heart. The mouth only speaks what's in the heart. So what is in your heart will it eventually come out. It usually comes out in a stressful situation. That's why I always find it amazing 
when I see Christians in action when it comes to stress. Some of them handle it so beautifully. And all they come out of their mouth is, well, praise the Lord, I know all things will work together for good. That's because their view is a godly view. And yet you also have, in the same manner, Christians who are who say they love God, and yet out of their mouth will come profanity, out of their mouth will come cursing, out of their mouth will come complaining. Folks, what's in our heart eventually does come out of our life. He says, the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. He says, in fact, it defiles the whole body and sets on course the course of nature, which is set on fire in hell. He says, listen, if you don't control your tongue, the iniquity in your heart is going to come out in those stressful situations. If Jesus is ruling your heart, if Jesus has control of your mind, he has control of your heart, he will have control of your tongue because the mouth only speaks what's in the heart. But he says, if your heart is set on the things of this world, if your heart is set on the idols of this world, if lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life are leading and directing your life, then what's going to happen is that's what you're going to set your affection on and that's what you're going to be talking about. You, we only talk about those things which are really important to us. What always amazes me is that you can get together with a group of people and how very quickly the conversation can go into gossip or slander or how a conversation can lead away from the things of God and not instead towards the things of God. He says, it's amazing. He says, we are able, this is James talking, we are able to, uh, there are all kinds of birds and and serpents, and beasts, and that things can be tamed. But he says, and these things can be tamed by mankind. But the tongue no man can tame. It is unruly, full of deadly poison. So, James has a very, I would say, negative view of the tongue. And I think he probably got that through human observation. He saw how ungodly men acted, but occasionally he also saw how godly men acted. You see, when God is ruling in our hearts, when we have said like David, please put a watchman on the door of my mouth. Holy Spirit, help me today with my conversation. Help me today with my speech. Help me today with my uh, the way that I view things. And then, of course, in James chapter 1, he reminds us the secret of being able to tame your tongue. First of all, be quick to hear, be slow to speak, and slow to anger. He reminded us there that the anger of man only leads to destruction. And so what we need to understand is our tongue can be used for two reasons. We can use it to praise God or we can use it to curse men. My prayer is that today we will allow the Holy Spirit to have a of control of our tongue. That's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is really all about. It's about God getting a hold of your tongue and using your tongue as a instrument of blessing, an exhibition of God and grace. But, he says, only that's going to happen when you have made a decision, when you're going to yield your life to the Holy Spirit. You're going to say, Holy Spirit, today I want you to be the instrument that controls my conversation. I am making a decision today to put a watchman at my mouth. I've decided that before I speak, I'm going to engage my brain. Before I even speak what's on my mind or heart, I will check my heart. It only takes a moment, folks. That's the thing. It only takes a moment for us to check our mind and then check our mouth. I've actually seen people go, like that, because they know that they may say the wrong thing, or they're tempted to say the wrong thing. And you know, life presents us with all kinds of opportunities to be a blessing or to be a curse. What we need to do is say, when an opportunity comes, Lord, let me be your instrument, speaking your wonderful word for the right reason, for the right purpose, to the right person, at the right time. That would be or should be our prayer. Remember, James says, the tongue can be unruly, full of deadly poison. That is not what you want to have in your life and situation. You want God to have control of your tongue and your life. And that way, 
you'll end up being a blessing. My name is Robert Dean Steele. This is your daily Bible class. You have yourself a great and godly day.